My name is Jamari the Rebel. And I'm the Big Pink Pegasus. And this is Tribe Chat, the long form podcast about alternative sexuality from a black perspective. We make you think, we make you laugh, and we, and make, we make you come. come. And right now, we're actually doing a special edition right now. It's what I call Tribe Chat on location. I'm here in Jersey at the Homie Dub Nation event, and I'm my special guest. The Naked Trumpeter joining us today. How you doing, brother? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank y'all for having me. Thank you for being here. <coughs> yes. Causing a lot of to talk. talk it's the, the holiday street. season, as you can <laughs> as you can tell. You you look real festive, man. Yeah, you do. Hey, I'm just with the theme of the party. I love the sweater. Yes, yes, yes. So let's talk about some of your gear, my brother. <laughs> for real. I have to. Nah, I got to talk about the collar first, my guy. <laughs> Cause they, you know, they want to know. That's a, that's, that's some heavy duty shit there. Yeah. What's up with your question? Nah, for real. Where did you um get your collar? And is your collar like I know typically when people are collared, it symbolizes being like collared, as in you know belonging to someone. Are you collared? So I wear the collar. It's my own kink. Um, it's an uh, auto asphyxiation. Mm. So I'm basically uh, giving myself a breath, a trench, a blood choke all day long. What? Ew, you hear this level of commitment? My brother is is giving himself a choke all day long. When he's at the bathroom, <clears throat> when the dude just wakes up in a text, he's still choking himself, man. After he already nut, the nigga's still choking himself. This is David Carradine turned the fuck up. Okay. <laughs> so so happy to have you here, and so we just gonna get right into it. The people don't see. I'm you know you had a following already. But the shit that got the streets buzzing, you already know where we going. You already know where we I going. I do play the trumpet, yes. <laughs> naked. Butt-ass naked. Butt-ass naked. Hence the term, the naked trumpeter. Sometimes the clothes on, but mm. sometimes naked, yes. So is, 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 is the actual tool the only thing that trumpets? No. Oh, really? Did you bring the trumpet? No, not today. <laughs> I'm disappointed. Yo, Eli has this thing where he puts the trumpet like when he visits certain ladies. Yo, tell us about yo, the, the trumpet in the lap. Explain that trumpet in the lap, man. Do you like vibrators? <laughs> to say the least. So, um, it's nothing but just a, a very mild vibrator. Mm. And if you have a piercing down there, then it, it'll uh, it be, can be a little more hands, mm-hmm. which is vibration. Mm. So and just, you get music. I just call it whole vibrations where I'm serenading your yoni and you at the same time. Uh-huh. And the vibrations from Me and my yoni are one. And the pressure, <laughs> you can feel it down there. Who, how many of y'all ever had your pussy played to? Like, this is some next level shit. This, this is what it's all about in 2000. What is the next year? 23. Getting, getting fucking songs played to your pussy. Fuck your ears. We here in a new different kind of way nowadays. So That's Eli, it. Were you a you musician done first? Shit. Or were you a Manson Tom first? Or from, like, did you experience uh, your journey in kink? Did it begin first? Or does it stretch a little bit longer in music perhaps? So the honest answer to that is uh, like most people break into their, their parents' porn stash. Um, I broke into my parents' uh, Sex toy stash. Yeah. So um, I would say the the kinky exploration started when I was young. <clears throat> the musician started when I was like 13. So the, the kink and sexual play started with myself when I was younger, and then the uh, music was a lot later. So like you didn't like play with your parents' toys to like Miles Davis or no shit like that. Like I think that might have. I don't believe you though. <laughs> I don't believe you. No, they were looking to like Millie Jackson and, um, and Red Fox and shit like that. See, so you, you know what type of oh, for sure, was, like, for um, sure. My boy, eight days a week. Um, uh, I'll be a candy licker. They were listening to shit like that. What's his name? Clarence Carter. I'm. I don't. I didn't know that. That just he just put that in my head, y'all. I didn't really fucking know that. That's a lot of stroking, but yeah, yeah. I know where your mind is. Mm. Stroking. 
being stroked. It's right. But hold on. Let, let me let me further further elaborate on what he was talking about. So uh, the trumpet on the in the lap, the vulva. I call it vulvic vibrations. But I can use my basically vulvic vibrations. The same way I play the trumpet, I can play your your vulva the same way with my lips. So I just turn my mouth into a vibrator. And how do you do that? How do you how do you you hear that? Yo, my nigga said he, he said, do you want to see? I, you, you don't even really got to fucking ask me if I want to see. Now, as we going to show everybody is is, is is the fucking question. I'm a hoy. Don't do that. You've seen some of my content, so I, you know I, I don't have a problem. Listen, I know you don't, and neither do I. Do you know me? I know you. I, okay. But before we, before we get all into that, because once we do that, nothing else gets done. Nothing else gets fucking done, so let's just. Well, yeah. Oh, the nigga trumpeteers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, one of the ways that we try to begin is with a like icebreaker. You see, this is triple X program. See, I'm a brand ambassador for this game. What it's designed to do is to help you sexually explore. It's an adult communication tool, whether you're right. couples or games. How we typically start is with the card game version. So what Pegasus and I do <laughs> is we take some cards and we ask some questions for our guests. So Pegasus and I are going to take turns, and we're going to get about three cards each, and we'll each see exactly what we get to know about you. You guys want more information on Triple X Playground, you can go right to our bio. Pegasus, you want to answer this question first? <laughs> Pegasus be having questions. I don't know if Triple X Playground, but... Nah, 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 nah. Okay, so name three celebrities you would love to have sex with. Now imagine them all here at the same time. Paint a visual picture for us. Oh, Jesus. This is like a question we <clears throat> ask on the show a lot. It is. I, I think this fucking card is duplicated. See, I just gave you time to think. No, I, I, actually, <laughs> I, I know who they are. Oh, um, shit. I just Look don't at know this. Why, I, I don't know why I felt comfortable actually answering that question. But I, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it a stack. So I'm wearing one of their um, outfits, Fancy. So you already know what I'm yes. talking about. Yes. <laughs> Read <Really? laughs> um, okay. Lizzo is, is, is uh, n- and not in any particular Yo, order. Yo, brother got some good so taste, it's not man. in any particular order. Mm. Um, the third person, I don't really know. Those are the first two that just come to mind. Oh. Like, just like, no cap. Well, that's, 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 those are good oh, choices. Jasmine Sullivan. Is he in my oh head? My God. Is he in my head? Because okay, she a freak. All see, of them together. Consistent with him being a naked trumpeter, all the women that he selected were, of course, musicians. Musicians, like right. He right. want them to blow on his trumpet too. <laughs> I'm sure they can make some things vibrate. Let me see what question I and got. you're not the only oh, one with God. the with the pulsating lips, darling. Let's Don't see. you ever be no fool, but I'm going to just be okay. Go ahead, Omari, because we about to get somewhere the fuck else. Next question is, would you be willing to try anonymous blindfolded sex? I may have done that before, but... Yay. Uh, how was that? Fucking <coughs> yay. It was amazing? Yo, for real, like, um, was it with a partner at a party? Like, your walk was still full of Yeah, I was about to say that. I need to be walked through that. Um, I need your car. I think my first play party, uh, I was 18. I was blindfolded. I looked up. That was my first time pulling someone's hair, <clears throat> and not just not just like pulling. Like the lady was like, "No, really pull." And I was like, "Well, how?" And somebody showed. She had her partner showed me, and I was like, "Oh." So I was blindfolded. I was pulling her hair. She had a bit in her mouth. Um, that was a crazy experience. That was a crazy experience. So I'm done. It. It's fucking amazing. Oh really? Cause I like I'm a visual person. Like yo, I need to like I need to see the spit and like you know what I'm saying. I feel like I'm I'm missing out on sensory deprivation allows you Ooh. to be uh, talk about it more in your body. So if I take away your eyes, you have, you have to rely on your ears <clears throat> and your sense of touch, and your sense of smell. But everything I do is gonna be heightened at that point. So it's just a different way to play. It makes the game more. Fun. It makes you focus other. It makes you focus in other areas that you normally would not, and have the experience that you wouldn't normally That's have. That's like ejaculating on the, with a little um to the exponential power. What's the next question? <laughs> so, okay, would you be open to having the male join us? Somebody get the goddamn door. Because while we live, people come to the fucking door because this is where we live. Just in case y'all didn't know, we on location. Uh uh-uh, uh, but the people want to know what I know is neither here nor there. Hell yeah, like what's, what's the problem? The more hey, the, I just, these, the more the merrier. So you would be open. So, I, not even, I've, I've done it before. I, I have a scene where it's, uh, it's male, 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 female, I believe. Oh. Um, so, like, 
to me, I, I look at it this way. Pleasure is pleasure. And whatever it is it feels good to you feels good. So I don't put a judgment on what the human is. Um, it's more their energy, how they approach it. So just so we're just so we clear for, for anybody who's watching, you're a bisexual male. No, I'm not bisexual. I don't believe in bi Okay. <clears throat> so passion encompasses all. Um, bisexual because of really what it how it's defined as male and female. So it doesn't it doesn't give um, it doesn't give any um, thought to people that are non-binary. People who identify as they. Yeah, they or them or it or whatever whatever their their pronoun may be. Um, not everybody subscribes to being male or female. There's some people that are asex or intersex. So they're I mean intersex where they um, have neither male or female genitalia. So um, pan is just all. All nice. I'm so, that I'm so glad that. I'm so glad you decided to break that down for us because a lot of people watching don't necessarily believe or know that. There are um, masculine individuals who identify as male who live this way and who are walking amongst us, and that it's okay for you know for them to do that. Well, so, what, so what, the other word they may use is DL because <clears throat> they don't because they're not being they're not being fully uh, honest with people about it. So whether you're bisexual or pansexual, there's more openness about it. Right. Uh, but there are tons of people that out here that are not traditionally heterosexual. Right. Which, what is your experience? As an open pansexual, deviant, deviant like from you know, like heteronormative society, can be a challenge. Well, my experience has been both positive and negative. The positive is my mom had a girlfriend and a boyfriend, so I didn't I didn't grow up in a in a household where these things were not. Uh, they were, they abnormal. were abnormal. It was right. normal to see a mom with a girl, or when I say girl, a woman or a man, they, there was no issue. Um, as an adult, sometimes people would be taken aback, like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I'm like, well, what is there to believe? I just tell people, you deal with people that are like me every day. I'm just honest. Right. I'm just not trying to, to, to disguise who or what I am. Right. So it's not that you just don't know, you don't recognize or you don't make one of them. Um, but, I think um, I, I, I commend you. That's, that's very, well, I mean, not that you need it, but because of the very fact that you said people are like on the DL. Um, that is something that you know that other people may want to know that you're interested in, and it may change their mind or give them pause. Me, myself, if I knew something about me, may change the person I'm in. I'm interested in opinion of wanting to be involved with me. I would divulge that. I can't say that everybody else should. That's just the way I, you know, I would. But I'm <coughs> happy that you chose to do that. It's just the full spectrum of sexuality here. Matter of fact, my next question was, would you be open to having a female join us? <laughs> it's funny. I mean, anybody that's willing to come, as long as they can sit, <laughs> male, female, yeah, but definitely yes. As long mm -hmm. as they so, can sit. I'd rather you dislike me for who I truly am. Right. Or love me for who I truly am. Absolutely. And, um, let's look at it this way. Let's say we met, right? We fall madly in love. We've been dating for six months. And then you drop this bomb and I drop this bomb. Like, I hate you. Right. I'd rather tell you that I meet you. Because at least you, you have a chance to say, I, I want to know you. Niggas hating each other I, on first sight. And that's respect. Listen, I've, I've dated people that was like, I, was, I have never dated somebody who's pansexual, but you're cool, so let me see what that actually means. Because a lot of the, our ignorance um, comes from not knowing, right. but then we have prejudice. Right. I mean, a lot of our condition is from ignorance and their prejudice. Um, if you've never met someone that is, everything that it's you think about, about that... It. Right. Is whatever that is, is. Mm -hmm. if you've never met someone that is, whether they, they're black, they're white, they're Latin, they're Puerto Rican, they're Indian, they're, they're Native American, they're like Korean, they're, they're Chinese. Yeah, whatever it is, if you've never met them, the, the only thing you can think is your prejudice mm -hmm. or what someone has said or just you have all these myths that you have in your head. Right. When you actually meet someone that is, whatever you're, that is not you, you're like, damn, you're not what I thought. Right. So you get a chance to see them for a human. So at the end of the day, uh, that's the, what we're connecting to. We're connecting to the human spirit of the person. I don't want to connect to your persona. <clears throat> I don't want to connect to the person that got to show up for work. I'm going to connect to who you are as a person. Right. So if I tell you, this is, these are the things I am, this is what I like when I meet you, and you can accept that, you're going to, you actually get a chance to see who I am as a human and say, well, I might not have had, because there, there are tons of times where I might not date someone because I don't drink. And if you drink, that might, it's not my thing. I'm like, well, let me see how you carry your alcohol. Let me see how 
you act socially with liquor because it may be totally acceptable. Right. My concept is, well, my dad died of liquor poison, alcohol poisoning. Um, he destroyed his liquor, so he might be an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. But that's a prejudice of something that, that's trauma in my life. Right. I have to give you the benefit of doubt and the chance to actually be human and be like, oh, you can control yourself. You only drink occasionally, and you have, you're not addicted. So it's the same thing as being prejudiced with someone's sexuality or uh, idiosyncrasy about them. That doesn't define their character. It's just uh, something that manifests in their personality. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're if you're in in and your acceptance, I guess, is based on your willingness to um, interact with the character versus the with the function of the the functionality of the human of the of the physical person. I wanted to ask also, how long did you identify as pansexual? Because you are a green vet, right, bro? Army vet. What was your MOS? So that's actually I don't really talk about that because it's my personal. Yeah, yeah. okay. There was a point in time in the military where there's a don't ask, don't tell thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what to call But I've always been who I am. So your battle buddies never gave you any level of discomfort when you were trying to navigate your career. I don't want to like. You know, I don't know how they are about. No, because if you have sex with it, has nothing to do with your job. Exactly. It's um, definitely the way it should be. I mean, people tell jokes. There are, there are always jokes that people tell um, in open space because that's what they're, they're, they're part of their bravado. Um, mm, say that. At the end of the day, people, even online, people say the most heinous things about me. Mm -hmm. But in space, I've heard people say, that sissy faggot bitch. And I'm like, well, I'm one of those saying people are like, oh. Their and whole, not you, though. Their whole persona changed. Yeah. Like, well, mm -hmm. What is it about me that isn't the same right. thing he said he was? Right. Because exactly. I'm not switching walking down the street. You don't think that he can put hands on you, too? So I, I, I don't really down find down that many people in person really just stay that much, that much richer. And I'm glad that you brought that up because, listen, I was actually speaking to the principal. When it comes to black people, somebody actually... Mentioned today, Shorty, that I'm gonna keep it black, I'm gonna keep it brief. What she mentioned was everybody is the first to talk about how black people are not a monolith, but what you always are going to do is disregard all of the people who don't fit and share blackness, i.e., LGBTQ black people, like him or Bernard Rustin, the person who actually organized the march on Washington with Dr. King, or Angela Davis. So we got a, 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 a party goer. Yeah, we got a party girl who has a question, um, if you're willing to answer. Yeah, as most people say, never will. <laughs> yeah, well, she don't, she she don't want to be... You identify as she, her? Yes, of course. Okay. Of course. Uh, um, she don't want to be on camera, but she does want her question asked. Yeah, this is y'all moment. Uh-huh, girl. That's what we do. <laughs> but I wanted to ask you, like, as being a pansexual, right, how did you come out to, like, your family and friends... To everybody, because I, I live in a Caribbean home, and when I told my mother that I am attracted to anything, whether it is just because like everybody has their own way they identify, but personality is personality. You can't control who you're, you know, Connected attracted to. to. Exactly. So my mother, she was very harsh on the fact that I was attracted to women, I was attracted to men, I'm attracted to anything regardless. So as, a, as your with your friends and family, how did you? come out to them and how did you start to be comfortable in your own way and not really care about who so, says what or what else? Uh, interestingly enough, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that laugh makes me excited. It, I, I'm laughing because when I when I try to explain this to people, I've always been myself. What they don't right. understand is I've cross dressed in my home, my mom was like, just don't don't fuck my makeup up. You can put on this, 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 don't fuck my shoes up. Mm -hmm. So my mom had a girlfriend and a boyfriend. So in oh, my wow. home Nothing that I'm doing now is awkward. Right. Um, I went to school sometimes dressed, like, I guess you would say drag, but just in women's clothes. Right. My friends are like, you've all, like people that know me from my school, like, you've always been this way. It's not, there's no, they're not, they're not, uh, what's the word? Uh, they're not surprised. They're like, oh, they're more surprised. There's like, you can give yourself head than. <laughs> you, you do all the other shit. It's like no, that we we, we knew you was crazy with that. It was just like right. that's the, it was like that's the thing they were surprised at. Not mm -hmm. that I'm open with everybody. It's like you wore you wore a dress in high school. We didn't we didn't think you were straight. We didn't know what you were. We we didn't think you were straight. So, but as far as being able to be comfortable, I, you only have to really tell people that you're going to have sex with. It, you, you should be mm. to right. a certain degree. 
Absolutely. Now, but as far as your family, I'll say this. It's more of a negative stigma against men that are pansexual than women, and you know that. It, it's because, that's because of patriarchy. That's because dudes want to see right. two women. Absolutely. Right. So, mm-hmm. that's a fact. Right. Yeah. When it comes to sexuality, people that have high self-esteem don't care what your sexuality is. They don't care right. anything about your I'm inner secrecies. They care about how you treat them. Right. Um, so I recognize that the people that, that you love that that um, have high self-esteem, they're going to be like, oh, we kind of already either knew, and we just wanted you to be honest with us and yourself. Um, or they're going to be like, and? At the end of the day, everybody is in love with somebody that they're not having sex with. Hmm. Wow. Say that. Dudes. Okay. Say when that. It's called romance. Romance. That's right. A vulnerable relationship with a dude. Mm-hmm. Be closed off with their female partner right. and then say... That they're not gay. I'm like, well, you're right. You're not having gay sex. Okay. But, but romantically, you're, right romance. you're gay. Right. You are intimate. Gay. So, do, wait, hold on. So, what's the difference between bicurious and gay? You know. Is there no difference Time at all? So, you know, it's a, it's a fine line between bicurious and gay. Well, sexuality a is a line. spectrum, you know what I'm saying? It is. So, it's, a, it's a weird spectrum. I, do, I'm going to put it like this. If we, if, if we were all in this room blindfolded right. and... People were being pleased. I promise you, they if would not care. it was good care. enough, okay. you wouldn't care who was doing so, it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so check this out. You got four bodies. You have a right. physical body. You can see it. Your skin. Right. Your energetic body. Mm-hmm. You know, you walk into a room. Is either you can feel the happiness or you feel the tightness. You have your emotional body and your, you know, your, your mental uh, body. Your mental body. Yeah. So when your physical body is being pleased, you do not care right. who is doing it. When you open your eyes, you're like, oh my God, it's that ugly person. Hold on, check this out. If you're heterosexual and you're a woman, he's thirsty because you're not attracted to him. But if it's the cute guy that you you crushing on, you're totally okay with it. That's true. Then it's like, well, if it was a woman, you'd be like, well, I'm a little grossed out because of how I think about it, but that shit felt great. That shit felt amazing. So pleasure is pleasure. Sexuality sometimes is who you're going to marry and take home to your family. Not always. Now, that doesn't mean that's what sexuality is. How we treat sexuality is who you'll take home to your family. Not always who you will have sex with or who you'll be behind closed doors have fun with. Because behind closed doors, almost every dude, just like almost every woman, has had the same sex encounter. Now, most dudes will be like, nah, never. People are like, oh, you've never been to Circle Church? The spot is in the Avis. But, but it's not, even, not even just oh, that. Not just that. Yes. Listen. Listen, not even... Whether they touched another dude, they yeah. were curious, they kissed, they, they said, well, let me see your penis. Pull it out. Why is yours bigger than mine? And you grab... All these things happen amongst little boys the same way they happen amongst girls. Yep. The difference is, dudes be like, nah, never happened. I'd be like, listen, I was there with you, bro, but cool. I'm going to let you be great. I ain't mad at you. Like, the, but, but who you will have pleasure with and who you will take home to your parents are not the same. Thing. No. So sometimes we say, I'm bi curious or I'm straight, but then you're having all the fun with everybody, but who you'll take home to your family. So sometimes socially we're heterosexual, but we're not actually heterosexual. So let me ask, can I, we before you go even go to, to, hold on, let me finish. Yes. Before you, before you go there, let me ask this. So do you think everybody goes through the exact same journey with sex i'm asking that i'll ask that this way because you said um some people um will consider themselves bisexual but if you're in a room then um you know you don't really care you don't believe that there are people who are just they love because this is the way i understood bisexuality i understood bisexuality as a person who does not mind having sex with a person of the same sex or opposite sex, but they're only emotionally attracted to or can allow themselves to be emotionally attracted to or bonded to by someone of the opposite sex. Do you not find that to be a case in some situations? That, so that's why I was saying sexuality is more of a... Is more of okay, so we were saying with. the same thing. It's like who you bring home to your parents. Right. But we'll say we're heterosexual, but then behind closed doors, all bets are off. Right. Right. Um, but there are some male body people and female body people like, no, I'm grossed out when she touches me. Yeah. And that's true. They're totally grossed out, physically turned off, emotionally, mentally turned off. That is that is uh, actuality. Okay. But what I'm talking about is the people that say they're something, mm-hmm. but behind closed doors, they're, they're everything. It's because it's that's not, like she was saying, it's not socially acceptable to right. come home and say, hey, this is who I want to be with. 
Um, and in certain cultures, yeah, it's totally taboo, oh, yeah. and it's, it's off limits. But the truth of the matter is, it happens out. every day. Spill out. I think it's Fuji in this part. So. <laughs> <laughs> We already know the answer to this question, oh, but we're going to ask it anyway because hey, everybody this, else might want to know. This is a good last one I got. <laughs> Do you swallow? Yes. <laughs> In case y'all don't know, he done answered that question already on the, on the, on the little uh, street confession. But, but, but yes. Bebe. Yes. So check this out. Go this ahead. And why the right time? This is the thing. I swallow my own. And... If, 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 listen, and if she's right in my face and she and she's first, she might like waterboard me. I'm hey, hey. Uh, so yes. yes, he likes the he likes the, the sexual torture. He want to be waterboarded by the torch. That's right. Yeah. Fact, so for my last question is, what is the one thing that you're most hesitant to try sexually? Oh, that's a good hesitant. Nice. Has to be something. <laughs> Damn. I like how you I'm think generally that. not actually like, like, like stuff that hesitant. So you know what? So so the, so this is what it'd be. It's not the something, it's the somebody and the way they approach it. Hmm. I like a lot of shit. Whenever a lot of shit like what? I like listen, I like anal play, I like being pegged, everything to deal with it. I will say this. I, my, my issue dealing with male body people is when they say shit like, I want to fuck the shit out of you. Mm. I'm like, first of all, right. what's your issue? That's, for, that's sexual violence. And I know yeah. what you mean, and that, you can't approach me like that. Right. I'm always hesitant to deal with people that use that word when they say they that want phrase. To deal with it's like, you can say, I want to have sex, we can have an experience. But when we use that word, fuck is always synonymous with violence. Yeah. I want to fuck you up. I fucking hate you. Or I want to fuck you. I want to use my dick as a weapon. Literally. So, I'm hesitant when people, when I'm dealing with Ava, I they use that word. Yes. You, you, you do with who? Asai Melibur. Okay, Asai Melibur. I thought I heard Arabs. I was Let me like, tell oh, you. is that when you say some racist uh, shit? Uh, I swore I heard Arabs, so we had to. Oh, weak. No, don't I'm do weak. that because I was about to get. No, that's a whole nother Disney. something. Yo. That's Ava. a whole nother Samuel something. Samuel Jackson, everything is motherfucker with him. It's beautiful. Shit, it's, that's it's, Samuel it's, Jackson. It's not now. the same thing. It's, it's, it's a concept, but we, we just talk about how we look at sex. Mm-hmm. And um, when you hear, when you say that, it's generally just this, this, this. Yeah. And it's like, it's the aggression. I don't need that. So I can say, I'm going to tell you this too, because I'm, I'm the same way. You can't fuck me to trap music. You cannot, certain things, uh, things are subliminal. And sex is more than just for procreation. It's an energy exchange. And I want to. I, this is beautiful. I don't give a fuck what's going on. This is what I'm about to do to you is beautiful. It doesn't matter how fast, how slow, how much teeth or how much slob is involved. It's going to be beautiful, and I want it to be received as that. And I want to get up. You feel me? You like got that. a soundtrack or preferred uh, playlist or do you so, have your own when you fucking? I just, so, you, mm, no, no, so, check, so, so, so check this out. Um, I almost never use that word when I'm talking about sex with, with any of my Fuck lovers it. or partners. Mm-hmm. And when I say it, the last time I said it, they they know exactly what I mean. If I say I want to fuck you, that means we're like, I, I it's the same it's the same thing. Like I am mm-hmm. trying to do this to you, so I, I try not to bring that energy. But when I want to have an experience, the soundtrack is is generally whatever the vibe is. Mm-hmm. So sometimes mm-hmm. it's no music and it's humming. Or talking to them. Actually just talk to them. The sound of your voice, um, when someone actually is attracted to you, is, is an, is an adorable thing. They it. actually like the shit. And people like to hear their name called. Or, like, the sweetest sound... Yeah, my name. The sweetest sound that, that you'll ever fucking hear in the world is your actual name. Amen. It, it's, 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 it's whatever you prefer. You, you can call, call anybody that daddy shit. You call me my name. That's personal. But yo, when you first start meeting somebody, and you start having your first experience with somebody, sometimes you don't want them to say, babe, boo. You want to make sure that they're actually talking about you, that they're actually present with you. So for me, saying their name and and just things that are meaningful, Mm -hmm. or like letting them know that it feels good, giving giving actual, because when people have a sexual experience, 
whether you're giving somebody a massage, rubbing their hand, rubbing their foot, you actually hope that it, you would hope that it feels good to them. And you, you want them to receive it well. I, I like feedback. I like knowing that I'm doing a good job. And I think that sometimes they want to know they're doing a good job. No one wants to be there just like, I, I, I hope they like it. You just, it's like, after after the ride, ride, a lot of times the dudes, we silent. You like, after the ride, you want the five stars. You like, you like, like does he even like this? So I want to, I want to get verbal. Even if it's just breaths, I want you to know that the shit you're doing is blowing my mind. So sometimes if there's music, I may sing to the song. Like, there's a lot of shit that happens. Mm -hmm. Shout out really... to the people in the back giving off the fuck noises for Yo, the while we... My favorite... crazy. Yeah, but my favorite playlist has got to be like the sounds of like ass slapping against the pelvis. Like, yo, for real, you can put that shit to a beat. That shit should go charting on Billboard. Ass slapping against the pelvis is never tired. You know how many rap songs that got the bed creaking sound in there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, like, wow. that's... It's mad rap song just in there. So let me tell you something that I know, that I know for a fact. Oh, Jesus. The ladies want to hear you growl. They want How to hear did, you why, growl. First of all, why do you believe that? Because <laughs> I happen to be a lady and I want to hear you growl. No. Okay. So this, this is my question to you. And I want you to help, help me out and everybody else out. What does that do to you? So... The growl is guttural, and it, it is it is so base level, and, and um, it's primitive, and I, I love it. I love the before we were civilized communication that happens with sex in 2022, you know, I, I like to go back there. I feel like, you know... Somehow weird. When you ground this woman, the caveman shit. Like, like, you know, I. On the owl. I just, I like it. Or some Doja like, Cat shit move. No, I feel like you might be summoning oh, your inner man. dragon or something, something other than. Listen. I just feel it. I like how you're over here having a mental orgasm. Yeah. And, and this dude, like, he like, do you mean hell? You per. <laughs> You are so night and day. <laughs> yeah. So night and day. Uh, I'm curious. I want to know because we're so we're just getting no cap. Some people instinctively growl themselves, mm -hmm. and they feel more comfortable to do it. Um, Is it during the climax or? For me, it's it's different. It's different points. So climax and ejaculation are not the same. No, and, no. and a lot of men think they are. I'm like, dude, you can have multiple orgasms before you ever ejaculate. Mm -hmm. So whenever I'm super excited or aroused or in, sometimes in pain or a high so like that. I actually growl. Um, I don't know how to respond to you. <laughs> <laughs> and most of them don't, Siri. Thank you. They'll be like, what the fuck? But um, I it, it's not something I just like. I'm not putting on. It's like I try to tell people. It's not like I don't just have it in the cut. Like it's really something that just happens, and it's visceral. It's you can tell, but the response I get is like what you said. They just be like, oh my god, like it's and to see someone's face for me, it's like damn, I did that. Like like because you when I was younger, girls like you gonna turn the world. They they were afraid. Like what the fuck is gonna happen? Now women are like, oh shit. He fucking a pussy so good he got Siri jealous, man. Listen, listen so let me tell you what that is. That is a that is a woman when that happens at this stage, I'm gonna tell you, I'm just gonna give you a from from my point of view. You know, early on the woman might be a little put off by that um that form of expression. But once they're once they have decided to go on the journey with you. It's like you're holding my hand, taking me into this, and I'm allowing it. Scared as hell, but I'm going. I'm fucking going. No, seriously, listen. Alternative sex is scary because, especially if you're connected, if you um, allow yourself to be open and receive that person, and you would change. And it's, it's very fucking scary because you meet them in a space that you don't see every day. Just walking here and there. I don't know you like that. That growl is something. It is 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 something. It's, I feel like I got you blushing somewhere. <laughs> you know what? That brings me. We were talking about alternative sex. You I'm designed sorry, some of your BDSM equipment. Yes. Yes. You I, we almost fucking forgot. Yeah. You know what? Take that boy, I'm So tell us what you got here. The uh, So um, a friend of mine named Sue, um, she calls them pussy slappers. But, um, pussy slappers. <laughs> they're just foggers. Mm. But... Um, for me, it's a different way to give orgasm and pleasure that doesn't require me to have sex with you in a picture of a picture. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I don't really believe in foreplay, I just believe in sex within itself. So it allows me to give you attention and be attentive, mm -hmm. but I don't have to hold my penis in. And it affects you differently emotionally, energetically, and physically. Uh, especially when, if I come up against a female or a woman that uh, is a better way to explain her say, but I come up against a woman and she has been disappointed by dudes saying, I'm going to make you come up and make you do all this. And she's like, that's, I'm used to that, that's whack. When I take away the monotony with this, one implement. Love that. Take uh, away the monotony, man. And I, I can give you different le different ways to excite your body because your entire epidermis is sexual. A lot of times we center on the nipples, we center on the, 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 the vulva and the back, but it's like you can have an orgasm when you're rubbing your foot. You can have an orgasm when you bite into an apple and it's just crispy. You're like, oh. So it's like, I, kink allows me to help bring uh, somatic pleasure to people because I get you out of your head and, and get your body fully engaged into what I'm about to do. So let's say Pegasus and I are about to have sex. If I get her entire body warm with a body massage and kink, almost everything I do is going to feel great. Mm -hmm. I can blow her. She's like, oh. So it doesn't matter if I give her 30 seconds or 3 minutes. She's already fully aroused and already ready at the point. So no matter what I do, she's already going to be there. Mm -hmm. So kink is another way of giving a mental orgasm because I got to be attentive. I got to actually listen to her verbally, her body, and check in to make sure she's still safe and feel safe. So it's not just suck my dick, turn around, you then don't take the stick from the back. It's intimacy on a level of how do you feel, what do you like, how do you like it, and then I'm going to give it to you in a way that you like so that you can feel safe and consent through the entire thing. That's don't fucking difference. make me feel safe during sex. You want to make me stalk you. Like, don't do that. Don't fucking ask me am I okay Yo. with the dick in me. You're what? You're, you're asking Yo, for yeah. trouble with an accent. You're also performing in adult movies. Tell me the difference between how you perform on camera as well as what you do personally. Perhaps in your private life or at events. How is it different on camera? Is, there is no difference. The difference is who I'm doing it with. On camera, you'll see my scene partners. Um, at home, you're never going to see me. You're never, you're never going to see a video of me having sex with my partner. Mm. That's the difference. Um, I live my life in a way that is extremely public and, and the public has access to it. So the only difference in my sex life is when I'm with my lovers or my partners is it's personal. Everything we do is between us. Um, but the way I approach sex, um, when I'm having sex with a woman, it is it is femme centered. It's, it's centered on her pleasure. Mm -hmm. So when you watch my scenes, if she's like, "I want to do this to you. I want you to come on my face." That's her fantasy. That's her kink. I'm gonna give it to her. Right. Some ladies are like, "I want to be treated." Like one lady was like, "I want to have multiple orgasms before you penetrate." If you watch the scene, it's 27 minutes and 38 seconds. 27 minutes and 38 seconds. He kind of turns a goddamn second, it, man. It, exactly. I the detail. Listen, listen, and when I tell you, it's almost no editing. The editing is the, the back end interview and the front end interview. It took her 20 minutes to her, for her to get her nut. She had a magic number. And once she was ready, she said, I'm ready for penis. Once she said that, then I could, pen I could penetrate. So my agreement is whatever you want to experience. So the way my scenes are designed, when you watch them, it literally is their fantasy being played out. And we're both just doing it. And you're still holding the camera, too. You also have Some, to say Sometimes I do POV. A lot of times I just have my camera over there, and she, she does a lot of the shooting. Um, but it depends on how I'm trying to shoot and what I'm shooting. Yeah. But the scene is still centered on their play. Eli filmed me before. Yo, Eli, we definitely got to look up again. We have so much talent holding the camera as well as a performer. And, yo, I got to get some of these pussy slappers. I find, yo, who's over there slapping? Yo, you slap a pussy with the... Pussy slapper before? You slap it? Oh, I always, I, man, I want to have my own fun. We 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 come from the same BDSM club. BDSM is life, bro. Word. So <laughs> listen, like like he be doing this part. Listen, yeah. <laughs> Eli. So we, um, what do you got coming up, man? Before we get about it. Oh man, in this month, uh, I got a party on the 14th of December. Um, I'm going to be in Atlanta for Christmas. I'll be back in New York for Christmas, New Year's Eve. Um, January 6th, I'll be at a cuddle party in D.C. A cuddle mm. party? A cuddle party is going to be fire. Um, I can bet. DC I want to do club. a cuddle party. Uh, 
I'll be in Philly in March. I'll be. I have a lot of events coming up. And you about to just get oh, a bed in the- Exotica. I'll be in Exotica in uh, Chicago. Sorry, yeah, I'm. Um, I might go out there too. Oh, you gonna be there? You back on the main stage? Be speaking. Listen. Listen. You said passing out orgasms like it's fucking the blood of Christ. Where can we find Listen. the naked trumpet too? Um, I am on Instagram at the naked trumpeter. That is T A H T H E N A K E D. T R U M P E T E R, Naked Trumpet on Twitter and Fat Life. And the Naked Trumpet on uh, Facebook. He did that school. Why is the cheap when they just go? So I don't fuck that shit up. <laughs> man, thank you so much for coming, man. It was a long time. Oh, thank you for having me. And I'm been happy to It's almost been like a year and a half. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, man. It just, I'm it's just been so busy, man. Good time, man. We've been busy. Yeah, man, for real, man. Uh, I gotta get you to come back to Manhattan, man. But um, listen. We are going to definitely update Shop Room for Hit Shop with some more footage and we are looking forward to returning to our home of the fuck we need studios for season three. We'll bring you some more footage in between on location and I'm going to reach out to y'all. You can get more exclusive footage on Excite Bunny and stay in touch with us on Instagram, Twitter, as well as our Patreon. We support our merchandise, like the merchandise. Right, support the merch. Well. That's right. On I don't the shit up. I'm, I'm cute. I'm cute and everything. We have two forms of merchandise, yeah, and we also have our Tribe Chat merchandise as well. And, and, and also, support. you can find these at Kinkstruments. That is K I N K S T T R U M P E T S. Kinkstruments on Instagram. I hope I ain't got no lipstick on my teeth. Okay, <laughs> well, y'all, this has been an awesome episode of Tribe Chat, if I do say so, my motherfucking self. So I want to thank our illustrious, beautiful guests. Uh, anytime, anytime. Hi, I'm over the rebel. I'm Big Pink Pegasus, and this has been Tribe Chat. I'm Eli Daniel. This is the party. This is who's, this is who's event. We're here. Say your shit, man. Thank you. Hey, nah, I'm good. I'm good. Hey, 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 h